the first thing I want to ask, okay, so there a number of years ago, a very popular blog posted an article and the whole healthy pet space went nuts because this particular blog suggested that coconut oil is actually bad for dogs. And I looked it up and they just updated the article in January 2024 and they have not budged on their opinion. And I want to uh, tell, okay, tell me what you think about this <laughs> because oh, man. I think coconut oil is wonderful. I know the blog you're talking about too. And I've actually spoken with the person who runs it and she was originally for some people may know she was originally a fan of coconut oil and and hardcore turned on it um i'm still not quite sure why because i have read literally every single uh nih study that's ever been done on dogs uh pertaining to coconut oil and mct oil and uh here's the outcome zero say that it's bad for dogs some show that it doesn't have an effect. And then uh, a lot of other studies show that it has a lot of health benefits. Um, it has probiotic-like effects. Um, it uh, you know is anti-inflammatory. And then what my book really dialed into is what I've called the Cocomega effect. Um, in fact, I, I have a copy of the book here. And um, you know the, this word Cocomega talks about uh, a really interesting new area of research that shows how combining coconut oil with omega-3s actually have synergistic effects on each other. So this whole idea of like synergistic ingredients, I think is going to be a, a really interesting future area of study. Um, and, and this, this line, you know, I just kind of stumbled upon it and the research showed that it's kind of like a one plus one equals three type of effect. So when you combine these fats and your dog eats them at the same time, something is happening, uh, in their body that they're actually like, you know, doing some magic with each other. Um, and, and it ultimately like all of these studies showed that it results in uh, additional anti-inflammatory effects. So, you know, for dogs who are having allergies or again, diabetes, obesity, um, you know, digestive issues are also like, you know, very inflammatory in nature. Um, it's just inflammation in different parts of the body, but basically, um, you know, I'm, I hope she changes her opinion someday because she's a very influential voice in the mm -hmm. pet community and, uh, also a very powerful person in it, I would say. And a lot of people do follow her. So, you know, I, I think that most of the holistic type of people I speak to have come to the conclusion that it is good. Um, also just like naming off some of the, the common complaints about it. One is the, the high saturated fat content. And, uh, again, I've read every single study that deals with saturated fat in dogs. And, you know, for instance, in humans, I've also read many, many studies there in humans, it does seem to have an effect on raising LDL cholesterol. So if like, that's a concern for people, um, coconut oil is definitely not going to be ideal, but when it comes to dogs, every study that's ever been done on saturated fat shows that it had no negative effects on dogs. And it makes sense, right? Like they are carnivores in the wild. You know, people often talk about how, how they're more om omnivorous carnivores or, you know, kind of like selective carnivores on like cats, but I mean, you know, you can't, you can't go against the studies. They all show the same thing. So that was actually going to be my next question, um, was about saturated fats, because I think for the most part, we think of the majority of the saturated fats that we get in our diet or that our pets get in their diet are going to come from animal sources with few exceptions in plants like coconut oil. So one of the things that I recently, somewhat recently learned is that the myelin in the brain, the protect kind of like the protector in the brain is pretty much completely made up of saturated fat. And if we look back at when in humans, when we stop, when we, when our media possibly backed by government, I don't know, I didn't go down that rabbit hole because it's, it's, it's sad. <laughs> It's sad to I go did, down the I, I did because it's fun. 
<laughs> um, but they, yeah, they demonized saturated fats, switched pretty much everything in our diets over to seed oils. Um, and that's yep. when we saw this huge, like, influx of Alzheimer's and dementia and these brain related disorders. And it's, you know, that theorized, and I see it, that, you know, this lack of saturated fats in the diet has caused significant damage to the myelin in the brain, which is then not able to, you know, we can't, it's not functioning properly. It's not protected properly. And yeah. so I can kind of see how the combination of the saturated fats and the coconut oil in combination with saturated fats from animal products, like most omegas, I mean, we can get omegas from like marine life as well, but the, that how much more powerful it can be to combine them is that, am I on the right track? <laughs> oh, abs absolutely. The so you know you'll occasionally hear people half joke about how uh, seed oils were originally a, a mechanical lubricant, which is true. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that they're bad for bodies, uh, you know, just by itself. So, uh, but the problem is, is that uh, seed oils are very high in omega six. Um, omega six has a couple of really bad issues associated with it. So. The first one is that it is um, pro-inflammatory. So in, in my book, I have a chapter with uh, a, a holistic vet who I've gotten to become really actually like friends with. We did a whole chapter together. Her name's Dr. Ava Frick. And, and we, we actually mapped out all of the chemical pathways associated with um, like omega-6s and omega-3s. And you really got to get that balance right. I mean, that's the the fundamental takeaway there. So like one of the pieces, one of the steps of the Coco Mega effect is getting those at at least a one-to-one -one ratio. If you look at pet food, and you probably know this, but a lot of people don't. So your typical high quality pet food is going to have a one to six, omega three to six ratio. Um, that is, um, you know, definitely inflammatory. You know, if you look at your typical dry kibble, it's at one to 16, and that's the same as McDonald's and American fast food. Uh, AFCO requires one to 30 levels uh, as kind of like a minimum. And they have, it's actually one of the hardest parts to f in formulating pet food is that you have to get to a certain level of omega-6 um, minimum. And so now you're trying to get the omega threes up. Omega threes also tend to cost more, so companies like typically don't want to add things like fish oil, for for a lot of reasons, um, mostly cost. And um, you know that that's just really really bad. Now one one way that we can counteract that is of course just adding like cod liver oil or salmon oil to our pet's diet, or like feeding them a little bit of sardines uh, as kind of like a natural topper. Like the, these things aren't aren't rocket science. Uh, just we you know find sources of omega threes feed them uh, that can balance it out. But the the bigger problem is that no matter how you cook pet food, with the exception of probably air drying and freeze drying, even fresh cooking food um, has this problem. Is that it does? And this is the second problem with omega sixes is that it does oxidize them. So getting back to the oxidized fats, that that's just like the number one offender in pet food. And so you know I'm always telling people. That's, that's really the first step is um, getting that balance right, getting it one-to-one -one minimum. Uh, Two-to-one is is probably going to be even better, as we can imagine. Um, and then just making sure that like those fats aren't getting oxidized. And so that that's where the, the cooking method really plays a big role as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the, you know, the, the seed oils, I mean... There, there's a lot of also, I'd, I'd say there's more research even being done in humans and we see more and more that, you know, they're not having a great effect. Um, you know, people talk about like expeller pressed uh, seed oils and, and that is going to be a little bit better. Like the, the way that the seed oil itself is produced isn't oxidizing it, but then we're cooking it later and getting rid of like any benefit of expeller pressing. And that, that really just means cold pressing. So, you know, the, the seed oils are bad. Um, they're only in pet food. Uh, the, the way that this started is because some of these aforementioned brands like Hills and Purina, who uh, also tend to, if you look at the board seats and stuff of AFCO, tend to be on the board. 
those ingredients uh, were only introduced into pet food because um, they weren't using real meat as the mm -hmm. the top ingredient. So they had to then supplement more omega sixes. But there's a really easy alternative way to do it, of course, and that's just like make real meat the the number one ingredient, and then it's pretty easy to to reach your omega six requirements. Yeah, so I think that is something that most people do not understand about a lot of commercial pet foods, these high heat processed foods. Um, and they, and that is a huge problem. I think something that may be easier for people to understand is that, you know, they still, even once they get that end result product, they're like spraying them with palatants, which are often oils as well. And they're chemicals they really. Yeah. And they, they oxidize too. Yeah, and they, for sure. Like, it's, it's really kind of a nasty process all the way around, but they do have to do something to make it appetizing <laughs> for our pets to eat. I, I've uh, tried I to reach out to these Palatin companies before. Cause I, I've, I've been like, you know, with perfect kibble, um, our first and still number one bestseller, you know, it, it's all health food ingredients. And so, um, you know, perfect superfood again is like a raw diet, air dried. So it's like all the benefits of a raw diet, diet, no synthetic vitamins and minerals, all the organ meats, and then air drying, it kills the pathogens. So it's like the best of all worlds, but with perfect kibble, um, which is what we originally, um, that was our first product. You know, we, we have things like, uh, um, I mean, like blueberries, like a lot of dog foods have that and flaxseed and, and, uh, and ingredients like that, that like we, we might eat and w it, it can be really hard to get picky eaters to get interested in that. So I started looking at, okay, like what are ways we ended up creating a, a, a topper called yum sauce. That's actually, um, it's actually more like Korean, uh, barbecue inspired, uh, flavors, but, um, I was like, okay, well, like, let's just see what these Palatin companies have to offer. And, and I, I ordered samples to my house. I mean, first off, they're, they're always the same thing. They're like really salty yeast extract and uh, yeast extract isn't like going to be a necessarily a bad ingredient in terms of longevity, but they just like, don't really taste that good. And so, you know, basically you know, pet food companies have found themselves in a place where they need to, they're using all these synthetic vitamins. They're using a lot of health ingredients that aren't attractive to dogs. Um, dogs just simply don't like them. And then we, we, you know, other brands coat with a palatin and, and it just, it really doesn't work. Um, so, you know, I think getting, getting back to the basics, like, um, and I, and I have all sorts of, um, like when pet parents come to me with a, I, I also have a picky eater. That's like a big reason why I've been uh, exploring this so much. So, you know, I, I've been playing around with so many things and I, I find pet parents just haven't tried enough things like, um, different from yeast extract is nutritional yeast, very healthy ingredient, high in B vitamins, like all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a natural source of glutamic acid, which, um, if you look at what MSG is monosodium glutamate, that glutamate is the chemical form, the artificial form of glutamic acid. And what that does is that glutamic acids, like in meats, by the way, that's like, besides nutritional yeast, it's like probably the biggest source of it. So, um, if we, and what it does is it lights up the brain. It, it, uh, it basically says like, yay. And, and so, you know, if we just top, you know, coat the, the food with nutritional yeast, or, um, if that, I mean, that works really well, but if that doesn't work, um, we can try things like bacon grease. Um, you know, people are like, oh, well this, is, I mean, I personally save my bacon grease for me as well. But, you know, people have been, I think, scared away from it, um, which is really odd to me because if you look at actually the, even the saturated fat content of bacon grease, it's a lot less than other types of animal uh, fats. So, mm -hmm. but there are all these little things we can try using natural ingredients. Um, toasted sesame oil can be um, a really good way to kind of get a, entice a dog into eating. Um, I just think that like a lot of people you know, can try more things. And, um, you know, there, there are like natural ways of coating the food, but it, 
it does get back to basics. If the food actually tastes right, then more your dog's more likely to to enjoy it. Yeah.